Hello, Nuggets. God, it's been ages since I did a video. I haven't got the thing up, but I think it's like two weeks. Um, all right, so uh, I went recently to Washington, D.C. We went to a wedding in Lynchburg, Virginia, and then uh, decided to take the time to drive up. We were only in Washington for a couple of days. We were in Lynchburg and the surrounding area for a couple of days. It's a lovely wedding. Um, so on the way up, um, the, we decided we'd stop at a couple of places and then we'd head into Washington. I'd never been to Washington. And I became a citizen earlier this year, and it was kind of like a pilgrimage. You know, I wanted to, to see the capital, um, particularly because with the current leadership of the country, for me, it's, you know, a little bit depressing. So um, I wanted to kind of rekindle my love a little bit. And I thought, you know, Washington's a great idea. We've got this wedding. It's perfect. So we went there. So the first thing we did after the wedding, uh, Lynchburg's beautiful, by the way. What a wonderful place. Really amazing place. Very hip kind of surprisingly hip, like very organic. Anyway, Lynchburg's wonderful. We drive up to uh, Monticello, which is um, the Thomas Jefferson, where he was, where he lived, where he was born. Actually, he was born a little bit, like three miles away, but it was his life project was this house. And of course, you can't go to, you can't research anything about any of the founding fathers without touching on slavery, you know, uh, because of the the contradictions in the Declaration of Independence and, you know, what the people were actually doing to black people at the time, right? So what was interesting to me was that I thought Monticello dealt with slavery very well. It's front and center, right? It's a huge part of the tour. They talk about what an amazing person Thomas Jefferson was, but they also talk about this contradiction, this paradox. I did note that they call it the paradox, of Thomas Jefferson's life, as it, which is a kind of like disowning it a little bit, almost like it wasn't his paradox. It was his hypocrisy. It was his contradiction, you know. Um, but other than that, I thought they handled it really well. Uh, I'm still a little bit on the fence. I don't know. I mean, Thomas Jefferson was clearly a great man. He did some amazing things, but he did some terrible things too. And I know cultural relativism. I understand that. But just on a, a purely human level, some of the things he did just, you know, it wasn't just his views that he saw them as lesser human beings. Because to me, that is cultural relativism. There just wasn't the education. It was the way he treated those people that he thought was lesser human beings. If I thought that, I couldn't, I wouldn't treat a dog like that. And I think a dog is a lesser species, right? So I, I don't know. To me, it's a little odd that that, that part of it. But I thought that they handled it very well. It's also, this blew my mind, it's not a government-run facility. It's a privately funded place. It was owned by a guy called Levy who purchased it. It was almost gone. We almost lost this whole thing. He bought it because, you know, he wanted to preserve it. And then somehow it ended up the foundation bought it and now they run it. It's really well run right it's really beautiful the people there are very knowledgeable it's a fascinating tour it's a must go it really is it's a beautiful place you know and the, the the if you walk down they have a thing called slaves row which is where the slaves lived and that is just intense it's an intense experience filled with guilt and and remorse and and you know lots of the reflection um but it's not government run which just blows my mind thomas jefferson a founding father, the, the author of the, one of the authors of the Declaration of Independence. Well, no, the author. It was, it was edited and people put the word in, but he was asked to write it. So it's just extraordinary to me, you know. I mean, maybe it works, maybe it's fine, maybe it's the free market at work, you know. It's very well run, it's beautiful, it's kind of expensive, it's 30 bucks to get in, well worth it. You know, there's no, there's no rides there, unfortunately. The roller coaster was broken, but other than that, it's really good. Anyway, so we did Monticello, that's fascinating. Then we go to Washington, D.C. Uh, I've been to a lot of places in America. I'd never been to Washington. I've been, I'm not going to list them all, but I've been to a lot of places in America. You know, I have been to more states than I've not been to. So, uh, but I'd never done Washington, D.C. I was really looking forward to it. Got there. Firstly, I love the city. What a great city. It really is a fantastic city. Uh, the food's amazing. The public transport's awesome. Everyone's really nice. I was kind of blown away by how nice everyone was. Like, we're a couple of tourists, and my wife and I looked like tourists. We were clearly tourists there. Everyone stopped to help. They're really, I mean, like, one guy just came up and went, do you need some help? You're looking for something? 
Like, oh, yeah, we're looking for this museum. And, oh, yeah, go over there. And, like, where can we have lunch? Well, you can go down here. Like, really helpful. So that was really nice. You know, it was a really nice experience. But the thing I wanted to talk about is the museums. And I know that everyone knows about the museums in Washington, D.C. But I don't think I was prepared for quite how good they are. Because I've been to some of the greatest museums in the world, right? I've been to I've been to a lot of places. I've been to the Louvre. I've been to all of them in, in London. I've been to also the New York ones. I've been to ones in Spain, in France, in... in uh, I went to one in Germany when we went to Germany. I mean, I've been to some huge, enormous museums. I've been to the great ones, great art museums in uh, the Netherlands, uh, in Amsterdam, Rembrandtsplein, stuff like that. Um, that's the square. But anyway, uh, the Rembrandt Museum. But I've been to these amazing places. And I have to say, I think that the Washington DC museums in concept blow them away. Is better than any of them. Now, the actual um items that they have there why am i blanking on the word or is it the exhibits that they have there i can't compare i don't i'm not knowledgeable enough but i would guess they're not quite the same i don't think it has as many rodans at their you know at their um their portrait gallery at their galleries and stuff like that but i'm sure the quality of the exhibits is but is lower than a lot of these other places but what blew me away is how they were designed, the experience was designed by absolute masters. Because the moment you walk through the door and you walk up to the information desk and they say, okay, start here and then carry on. It's, it's an experience. Everything is beautifully linked together. It's, it's just, it's like, like I, I don't really know how to explain it. I'm, I'm, I'm running out of superlatives because of how good it is. But it just blew me away. I, as I was walking through and enjoying the experience, I was also enjoying the fact that some that people designed this. This is the level of thought. These are people who are masters at what they do. You know, it was just beautifully structured. Like we went to the African American Museum. I told you it turned into a bit of a slavery trip because after Monticello, we were like, okay, we gotta we gotta invest in this. This was amazing. Um, and the African American Museum, which is a relatively new one there was just breathtaking. Firstly, the building is designed to look like a slave ship. It doesn't, it's modern art. But when they said it, you're like, oh yeah. And each floor of the slave ship indicates a period of time of the African-American experience in America. I'm gonna tear up thinking about it. So it starts at the very base, at slavery. And then it goes through, um, you know, it goes through the, the Civil War. Then it goes through um, the um, Civil Rights Movement and stuff like that, and the modern experience. But it is breathtaking. It is breathtaking. The structure of it is just, it's beautifully, you, you feel like you're wandering aimlessly and let your guide, and yet you're guided. It's almost like Ikea, right? You feel like you're just wandering around the place and yet everything just, it's all in order. And you, you read something, you go like, oh yeah, I just read about that. It, it's just this beautiful chain that unfolds. Um, and we found that um, wherever we went. We went to the Spy Museum, which was a mistake. It's a great museum, but I would not have chosen the Spy Museum if I'd realized just how good the other museums are. Um, the Spy Museum, I think, is a private museum. And it's fun. It's really fun if you've got kids. Um, but it's, it's not at the same kind of intellectual level as the other ones. Obviously, it's not. It's a Spy Museum. Um, but just in general, I felt that it just blew my mind how beautifully structured that it was their, their system the memorials the and i felt this about everything in the city the memorials the world war one the korean war the world war two the vietnam uh, there's just this aura in washington dc that i i hadn't experienced before and it just made me so proud it made me so incredibly proud of this country so i would recommend if you haven't been there or you haven't gone for a long time make it a pilgrimage like it's it's a it's a destination. It's not like, oh, if I have the time, you should choose to go to Washington, D.C. It's that good. It was that wonderful, the experience, you know. Uh, getting around the city is really easy. You know, you can take scooters. We rode scooters everywhere. Pissed off drivers, I'm sure. But that makes it really easy. You know, jump, lift, ride, skip, whatever they are. There's like 50 companies now. It's very annoying. Why don't they have one app? Can't they all get together? You would think it would be simple just to get together. They all have the same rules. They all have the same policy. They have different rates. But you could just use one app, surely. Anyway. 
Uh, but we got around the city. It was wonderful. So I highly recommend, particularly in this climate, or, or you know, if a, if a Democrat gets in, you're Republican, and that pisses you off, take a journey to Washington, D.C. to rekindle the love. Because it's remarkable what this country has achieved. And that city is just a shining light. We talk about New York. We talk about L.A. We talk about Seattle. We talk about San Francisco. We talk about all of these countries, all of these uh, cities, rather, and how proud we are of them. But the, the, the beacon to me is Washington, D.C., now that I've seen it. It is amazing. And I know that there's some terrible things that happen in Washington, D.C. And I think I kind of saw like the equivalent of seeing the French Quarter in New Orleans. You haven't really seen the whole city. But whatever. We traveled quite a bit around Washington, D.C. And what we saw was extraordinary. It was a, it was a real testament. We glimpsed at the White House on passing, but I wasn't really that interested in it you know although when i did glimpse it i was like my heart jumped a little bit um it's more about everything else in the city the structure of it i could live there you know the, the weather wasn't shitty <laughs> i could live there and i'd only been there two days so i know that's a ridiculous statement but it felt like it It felt like one of those places where i like wow i could yeah this is amazing we had great meals there anyway that was it that's an update sorry it was a long video but and i'm gushing about washington dc but make the pilgrimage take your kids if you haven't done it Make the pilgrimage with your kids to Washington, D.C. It is extraordinary. The National Mall, the Lincoln Memorial. Oh, it was absolutely beautiful. And it wasn't that crowded. It wasn't crowded. It wasn't like going to Disneyland. It was like beautiful. We got in everywhere. We had no way. Oh, the Holocaust Museum. God, the Holocaust Museum was amazing. I'm not even going to go into that. Anyway, so, um, and if you've been to the Museum of Tolerance in L.A., or I've been to a couple of different ones, right? Uh, the Holocaust Museum is better <laughs> in Washington, D.C. It just is. Again, it's the way it's structured. It's filled with art as well. They're all filled with pieces of art. And sometimes you don't know you're in the art until you're like, wait, look at the way this room is designed. It's just the levels are so deep. So congratulations to everyone involved in making, uh, in designing and implementing the museums in Washington, D.C. You are masters at what you do. All right, go to Washington, D.C. Buy nuggets. I love you, and I love this country.